Any news? None. We have an APB out. The security service and the police are out. Nothing. It's your head that has nothing in it. How could you lose the president? Actually, we're all fired. You are officially, but unofficially, you meet Ted are still responsible for the head of state's safety. The president can't just leave his house, hop in a taxi, and drive to who knows where. What if a bomber came here all of a sudden, huh? And our president's location has been unknown since last night. Do I have to tell you what to do? Sorry. <sighs> yes. <clears throat> Got it. Got it. Well, give me some good news. Mm, we tapped unconventional resources. By consulting psychics. One psychic says the president's alive, but he's in a closed area and in the company of strangers. Congratulations. It appears he's been snatched. Tolia. I will never forsake my principles. What the people need is change. So if you want to shoot, go ahead. But mark my words, I'm happy to die for my country. Свою страну, люблю свою жену, люблю свою собаку. Я всего на свете член, почти что супермен, но редко лезу в драку. Знает весь двор мой приговор, слуга народа. Достоинство и честь, и даже крики браву. Персональный самолет мне выделил народ, а что имею право на животу? Вот тут набьют ату слуга народа. But mark my words, I'm happy to die for my Tsar. This is how, in 1911, he was killed at the Opera House in Kiev. Pyotr Akadovich Stolypin. Boys, open the windows. Okay, well, that was a wonderful story. But who really was Stolypin? Was he a great reformer? Or was he just a simple failed official? Mm, it's not clear. What do you think, Vasil Petrovich? I think Stalipin found it very um, difficult to work in the system that he had to work in at the time. Back then, he couldn't fire anyone he pleased. He also didn't want to go with the flow and tread water. He didn't know how to. That's it, class. Uh, write down the homework assignment, uh, read over paragraphs 51 to 55. Class 10B, you still here? Or was I the only one who heard the bell? Vasil Petrovich, tell us, is it cool being president? What is really cool, Glotov, uh, is in that your very latest report, you called the Golden Horde Mongolian fascist invaders. <laughs> that was cool. As for the presidency, honestly, in my opinion, you dragged me into a risky venture. Enter. Vesel Petrovich, a moment of your time, please. Class dismissed. Yes, Reza and Drivna. Vesel Petrovich, what are you doing here? Can't you see? I'm teaching. By law, I can combine duties. The thing is, they're thinking you've gone AWOL. They... who? The country. 
President Holoborodko has started off decisively and boldly. Speaking before Parliament, he reminded lawmakers that they're servants of the people and emphasized that they should live more modestly and spend taxpayers' money wisely. Lawmakers annulled a series of perks, reduced the size of their staff and cut expenses. But the key measure was moving Parliament, the Cabinet of Ministers and Presidential Office. For more on this, Darina Toka reports. It's hard to believe, but it's Monday morning in downtown Kyiv. The place hasn't seen such peace and quiet in a long time. The residents have the lawmakers to thank for this, who yesterday moved from government buildings in large numbers. It appears that President Holoborodko not only knows but is creating history. Thanks to his ability, another great migration has taken place in the 21st century. How did you perceive the decision to move offices? I voted for it. Of course, we said yes. The most important thing was for us to free up downtown Kyiv. We've been meaning to do this. Meanwhile, the outskirts are buzzing with life. Officials are moving into their new offices, and there was even a suggestion to bless the buildings. Let's hope that this will help our politicians, and we'll soon see how the United Government branches achieve their first successes. Thanks. Did you intend to kill the country's prime minister? I almost died of a stroke. Sorry, I didn't think my absence would cause such a fuss. Don't be silly. The next time you plan to go missing, text me at least. I wanted to, but my phone ran out of credit. That's okay. Call off the SWAT team. Seriously? Yes. <laughs> Not the Air Force, too. Thanks for noting that. Call off the battle jets. What else were we to do? You started off boldly. You cut things, fired people, you started disciplining everyone. Then you quickly vanished. Wow. Evidently, Vassil Petrovich, your speech caused a ruckus. There's less pollution, the oil barons are in the red, all the parliamentarians and ministers are riding bikes. Me too. Really? Sure. I recalled my youth. Mine is the blue one. Oh, that's good. I'm pleasantly surprised. Well, you're about to be even more surprised. Yeah? I'm intrigued. Yeah, that's what I told you. Good morning. Good, good day. Hello. Uh, <clears throat> thank you. Vassil Petrovich. Take this. You've breathed life into the waning Morning. fire of Ukrainian democracy. Hello. Hello. Everyone got to work. They're moving and running around to and fro this way. Good. Thank you. Right. Good morning, Vasil Petrovich. Good morning. Your mail is on the table. Many thanks, Bela Rudofovna. Mm -hmm. This way, please. So how do you like your office? Well, it's charming. We tried our best. It's slightly exorbitant, wouldn't you agree? There's no exorbitant chipboard. Chipboard? Yes. Fantastic. And all these books? I brought the books from home. Hmm. Good. And this is a gift from me. Is this real gold? You're the head of state. You're supposed to receive VIP guests. I guess. And where will you be, Yuri Ivanovich? On top of you, that is to say, above your office. Uh, uh, the cabinet is on the second floor. Hmm, I see. Good. And Parliament? Let's go. I'll give you a little tour. Gladly. You know, Vassil Petrovich, the move was a great idea. Yes. Plywood. Plywood. Yes. Good. This is also plywood. <laughs> All the government offices are just a few steps away. Old parquet flooring. Right. Yes. French ceiling. Second hand. And this strip of carpet Bella also brought from home. Oh, is that right? <laughs> I'm kidding. <laughs> oh, please see, you startled me a little bit. Yes. I thought it was too long a carpet. <laughs> really, this way. Uh, right, thanks. And here, people's deputies will serve their time. Oh, bad wording. They will work in this room. That's good, but I don't see how 450 people can fit in here. Oh, I didn't tell you. We made cuts to Parliament. 70 lawmakers remain. Are you serious? Yes. Oh, wow. And it's not too extreme? I don't think so. The public has long demanded it. <laughs> Correct. No one ever saw many of the lawmakers. <sighs> they appear at the first session just for the banquet. Yes, I agree with you, Yuri Ivanovich. After all, who needs servants like that? Mm, sure. Vessel Petrovich, <gasps> don't sit. You didn't know. That's a cursed spot. It's bad luck. I know. But there's one problem. Mm -hmm. How will the remaining lawmakers vote? Indeed. Oh, oh, oh sorry. No Watch worries, out, I just handed it to me. Thank you. So sorry. Be careful. Like I was saying, how will the remaining lawmakers vote? 
There's virtually no room to install the Parliament voting system. Maybe the old way by show of hands. Right. That'll prevent multiple voting. Each oh, will sure. vote for themselves. Mm. Okay, and if the lawmaker is absent? Just bring their hand. Well, how? Kidding, Mr. President. <laughs> <laughs> You're kidding today. <laughs> Coffee? Oh, gladly. Is there a cafe? Yes, in place of a restaurant. <sighs> okay, then. Come on. If all this is working out so quickly, perhaps we could tackle that. What did? Oh. Oh. Excuse me. Oh. <sighs> a small fight. I'll fire you. The wages that the state owes its employees. Who? Employees. Ah, oh, right. Where's the cafe? The cafe? I think it's over there. So state-paid employees, we're still working on it. What's there to think about? Look here. We've cut the state machine, right? Mm, right. And saved around 500 million, right? Right. Now, we owe the employees exactly that, right? Right. Then it's simple. Let, let's give the employees the 500 million, right? Not right. That money is gone. What do you mean? Like that, it was siphoned off. I mean, it was distributed between the departments. Wage hikes for lawmakers and ministers. They had fewer aides now, so they'll have to work more. Yuri Ivanovich, please. They won't do more work. They will just begin their work. Siphoned off to departments. Where's the cafe? That way. Vesel Petrovich and the moving expenses. The remodeling, secure phone line installation, the bike lanes to work and home, and the actual bicycles. Two coffees. Why two coffees? Will you have coffee? Yes. And cake? No. That's right, we'll cut costs. The new reform won the approval of the whole nation. I was curious whether the lawmakers are implementing Holoborotko's law. For example, here's how Deputy Speaker Holovko is switching to a thrifty mode of transportation. Clearly, these policies are populism at its finest. An air castle for the people to throw dust in their eyes by creating the illusion of reform. <clears throat> In fact, the main so principles remain unchanged. The president's heated speech in parliament only briefly deflected the more pressing problems. But today we remember that teachers, doctors, and other employees haven't been paid for two months. Yet Ukraine faces other problems as well. I don't have enough airtime for that. But it appears Holoborotko prefers moving to building roads or fighting unemployment and corruption. Vasil <sighs> Petrovich, it's just an awful paid for news report. <clears throat> Don't take it seriously. She drank the blood of all the presidents. As they say, dogs bark, but the caravan goes on. It goes, but not in the right direction. It's all like window dressing. What we need is real change. I also think it's time to bury impotent politicians in the cemetery of history. Right. Whom shall we start with? With you, it seems. You can't be serious with me. Yes, I'm sorry. I was puzzled as to why my joints had been aching this morning. I knew it was coming. Sorry, it isn't personal. It's just that I think you and your colleagues uh, have been behind the wheel for a quarter of a century. Nothing has been done. Uh, where are the changes? Honestly, there's been no change. No reforms. None. And including the foreign debt. You are hugely in the red. You exist in a parallel universe. The people bark. Yet the money still flows. That's your motto. If not yours, then it's, it's your colleagues. Just take a look at who's sitting in here. Who's eating in the cafe? Secretaries, aides, but no lawmakers. I don't think they have time to eat. They work without breaks. Oh, come on, Yuri Ivanovich. Why are you defending all of them? We're not on a talk show. We really need different leaders. And mentally, we need a new country management. Very well. Let's say that's the case. Then let me ask you, where will you seek them out? Will you clone yourself? Why me? As any reputable organization, we'll have competitive recruitment, rigorous selection. Why are you laughing? It's not funny. It's all just funny. Hmm. Okay then, what you might have overlooked is that changing everyone at once isn't right. Perhaps it's better to fuse <laughs> youth with experience, hmm? About that. It's like mixing milk with pickles, if you will excuse the expression. <clears throat> Vasil Petrovich, you're new to the political kitchen and flatly cannot know that you can't cross off with one stroke of the hand. Hmm, let's say burgers, hot dogs and fries from the menu. But why not? They will be insulted. Who? <gasps> the burgers. They will hold paid for rallies. The hot dogs will block the esophagus and then there's the fries. It won't be discussed at the table. But it might start smelling like impeachment. 
Is that a threat? <clears throat> Yerovanovich, do you think Parliament won't vote for lustration? Vasil Petrovich, I don't think so. As majority leader, I'm stating a fact. Now understand this. You want change? Okay. But for heaven's sake, curb your appetite a little. Otherwise, you'll gorge yourself. I get it. What do you propose? <clears throat> Let's do it in a way, so to speak. That the walls are sated and the briefcase is intact. You leave the old cabinet in place, but use your quota appointments. But what will I get then? Are you suggesting the foreign and defense ministers? Plus the heads of the central bank, tax service and security service. And the majority will vote for your candidates unanimously. I swear it on my mandate. Enjoy your drink. Thanks. Thanks. <laughs> Vasil Petrovich, here's the order to competitively fill the quota post. So soon. Show me. Uh... All the departments will get copies. Yes, apparently... Psychologists, polygraph testers and others are invited. And also, maybe... The media uh... is notified. Tonight, it will be announced on all the channels and social networks. Mm -hmm. Do you think... Um... There will be a host of applicants, and I think that by next week we could start choosing. Mm -hmm. um... To save taxpayers' money, we should hold the appraisals here. Right. Bella Rudolfovna, uh... Coffee's on the table. Anything else? No, thanks. That's all. Thanks for everything. And thanks for the shirt. Here you go. I don't know what I would do without you. It's nothing. Once, a pigeon took a dump on the third president, two minutes before his meeting with Clinton. I can handle anything. Much appreciated. Okay, 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 okay. Now. Uh, Mom? Don't forget to give Dima his vitamins, okay? Blue before, red after meals. Don't worry, Olya. I've got it. <sighs> okay, I'm off. I won't wait for Vasya. Mm -hmm. Evening. Greetings, Vasil Petrovich. Oh, please. <laughs> <gasps> Did you see that? The president just kissed me. I'll have to tweet about this. Son, sweetie pie, how are you? Oh, oh, I'm fine. My golden one. Dima, daddy is home. Hi, dad. Hey. My handsome boy, how many today? Let me count one, two, three. Four. They're all mine. I know, of course. Okay, let's go and wash your hands before dinner. <clears throat> Olya, would you like to stay with us for dinner? What do you think, huh? Actually, Mom, I have dinner plans. I have a date. Too bad. Petya, girls, Vasya's home. Time for dinner. A date? Mm hmm. Hmm. Well, I'll take my leave then. Bye now. Don't forget your jacket. Oh, I forgot. Thanks. <laughs> Mm, what an honor. <laughs> it is. So, Vasil Petrovich, I noticed that your courtyard looks quite spiffed up. Maybe you could live with us for a month. There's not much to fix, just the door buzzer and the swings. <laughs> I could, if you like. Uh, <laughs> fix the door buzzer, I mean. Vasya, keep your cool, okay? I could bear a month of you over a buzzer. <laughs> Fair enough. Okay, huh? I'm off then. <laughs> I won't kiss you a second time because the country won't forgive me. See you. <laughs> Oh, another thing, Mr. President. Please don't show your son any more of those documentaries about Mesopotamia. He won't sleep afterwards, okay? Yes. Great. I'll come for Dima on Monday. Bye now. Bye. Oh, uh, why, why on Monday? Wait. Where will you be going on to Monday? Hmm? <laughs> Mr. President, it's not polite to pose such questions to young, unmarried women, you know. <laughs> Look, Holoborodko, this isn't show and tell. Oh, just a weekend country trip with a young, cute lawyer. He owns a condo. Hmm? <laughs> He's not bad at all. You know what? I... Oh, dear. <laughs> That's my mate's dog. Uh, this is the lawyer. <laughs> Isn't he cute? I have to say, I like the dog more. Look, Olobrotko, don't you care who your son calls dad? What do you mean? I'm kidding, Vasya. Relax. Okay, wish me luck. Bye. Good luck. Bye. Dima, to the table. Where are you going? I'll go get my action figure. Be quick about it. 
Is everything okay, son? All good, Mom. Come to the kitchen, my honey. We've been waiting for you. The food is warm and delicious. <coughs> Still here? What do you mean? I thought that you'd moved. Where to? Wherever, to Mitsuhiria. Or to Veronsov Palace, or maybe even Sunura. What's there? A president's palace that's vacant. Why let good things go to waste? Hey, Dad. Vasya, let's... maybe enough already. Is it? I mean, really, we get the point. <clears throat> to coin a phrase, we concede our mistake and acknowledge our guilt. Some potatoes... Just one. Here. You see, we wanted to get a taste of civilization. Did you? Well, we tried and we learned our lesson. Okay, that's enough. Here's a cabbage <clears throat> roll. Okay, let it go. Okay, Vasya, let it go. Let's just say the incident never happened. <clears throat> Let's say it that way. In that case, hmm, a truce then? A shot glass of peace? <laughs> <laughs> Forget the shots! I bought beer! Beer? And roachfish! Hey, what's the occasion? Isn't soccer on later the quarter semi final match? <laughs> <laughs> How could I have forgotten, mm. huh? Where's the remote? Hello, Ukraine. Hello, soccer fans. What's this? We are happy to welcome you to this quarterfinal here, and what an athlete. It's on HP. What a game we have. We Son, he took it so just like any other borrower. And Some I was the loan guarantor. I don't have a PC um, tablet now, but we have a plasma TV. TV. I'll take that to university. Yes. <laughs> well, then I'll just pay my share too. <laughs> Mum, bring the beer. <laughs> Yay, it's starting! <laughs> so, come here. Check out my transformer. Very cool. Is it also incredible? <laughs> what? <laughs> Let's watch a match. Listen, take that cripple off the field. He can't even kick the ball properly. How should I know who to put in? You're the coach. You figure it out. Okay, bye for now. Focus on the game. Stop yakking on the phone. So what if I was the one who called? Yo, just try and place the blame on me. Chill out, Mikhail Semenovich. Your team has no hope of winning. Of course it hasn't. You greased the referee. And you didn't grease him, did you? What if I have? But the ref is favoring your team. That's because I greased his palms slightly more. Gentlemen, we do have a guest with us. Good evening, gentlemen. Good evening. Good. What's good about it, Yura? What the hell is happening? What's happening is that you screwed up the game. <laughs> <laughs> Fooling around. You've got balls. You're a big man now. Mikhail Semenovich, don't get worked up. Yuri Ivanovich is our partner, so let's respect each other. Agreed. And let's agree to ask the respected Yuri Ivanovich why that whole Barotko is appointing his own people. Misha, there's no need to shout. I played with the cards I got. Holobarotko wanted to dismiss the entire cabinet, so we all got off lightly. <laughs> you call that lightly, Yura? Those were key positions. Look, let the boy imagine that he's changing something. Let him play democracy and reforms a little. But I trust that... Naturally. In the end, it'll all work out our way. That's why I'm in my post, Misha. Let everyone do their own thing. And... Buy a couple of good strikers already, would you? It's the 90th minute. Strange. Where's that goal? And he shoots and he scores! What did I say? What on earth? What an ending to the match! Bravo! Right. Скоро будем лучше жить.